If the international phonetic alphabet has symbols and sounds you haven't mastered yet, it's time for IPA and IPAs with Molly. Hi everybody, welcome to IPA and IPAs, an unfussy show about the international phonetic alphabet and beer. I'm Molly from Molly Does Dialects, and welcome to another week. Today we are learning about another approximate. So if you didn't learn about approximates last week, if you're watching these out of order, that's fine. Pop back, look at it, or don't, do it later, that's fine. Today we're going to learn all about the approximate that we might think of as R, but before we do that, we're gonna talk about what we're drinking. So today, from Bayou Tesh Brewing in Arneville, Louisiana, I am having the Acadie French Farmhouse Ale. And I'm very excited about this. I looked up what makes a farmhouse ale and farmers brewed beer basically to keep. And it said that a French farmhouse ale means that it will have, oh my goodness. <coughs> oh no. <sighs> a French farmhouse ale should have um, sweet, earthy, funky flavors. So I don't know exactly what that means, but um, Bayou Tesh's website mentioned uh, a tangerine hop aroma, so I'm excited to smell this once I take care of this abysmal pour. Okay, <laughs> I finally got that pour under control. Now it has actually a very pretty head on it. Um, it does smell like tangerine. I like the smell of it. Cheers, everybody. Okay, this is way more my style than IPAs. I hate to admit that on a show called IPA and IPAs. Um, it's, um, it is kind of funky. And I guess in the style of a French farmhouse ale, it's got like a, like a really tart sort of tangerine-y fruity flavor. And then it mellows out, there's a little bit of a sweetness and it leaves a very pleasant aftertaste. Um, I think that's why I don't like IPAs, is I feel like it leaves a really bitter taste in my mouth, but this one leaves a really pleasant taste. Yeah, let me know if you've tried this beer before, if you'd like to try this beer. I recommend it, it's really good. All right, so today we are talking about the consonant R. And R's can be really tricky. Um, they vary a lot in, in accents. They are difficult to master. They are a pain in the butt. Um, Jim Johnson, in the interview I did with him, you can watch it. We jokingly, he called it Hell's Consonant. And I agree with him. But don't worry, we're going to figure it out. We'll talk about it, we'll go slow. And if you have questions, you can ask them and we can figure it out together. So. The first R I want to talk about is an alveolar approximate. So your alveolar ridge is the bumpy area right behind your top teeth, like in the gum ridge, that's your alveolar ridge. And your tongue is going to point towards your alveolar ridge, it's not necessarily going to touch it. And that's the sound R as in red, rules, wrong, right. And it looks like this comes up and then there's like a doo -doo -doo -doo. the train likes ours too so your alveolar approximate R just our normal run-of-the-mill what we think of as the beginning of a word red rules right wrong it looks like an upside down R um, and so this is the R in an initial position. We are not talking today about R's that end words, like alveolar. Those are a vowel plus R. And we're gonna talk about those on an entirely different video, so don't worry about it. We're just talking about initial R's. So this R is your alveolar approximate. Now, 
I am about to blow your mind. I say this because it blew mine when I learned about it. Sometimes people use an R called an alveolar tap or a tapped R. And this you might be really familiar with um, if you speak Spanish, the word pero, 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 and your tongue kind of goes pero, that little tap sound. But what you might not know is you also probably use an alveolar tapped R or just a tapped R when you say words like butter. You see that, that kind of a D sound? Because we're not saying butter. We're not making a T. Butter. Try it at home. Butter. Bitter. Or if you um, grew up in theater, Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Bitter butter. But she said, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will soon make my batter better. Um, I digress. That's a tapped R. What you're saying, butter, butter, pero, butter. Did that blow your mind? Tell me if it did. It like absolutely blew my mind when I learned about it. And this is what a tapped R looks like. It's like you're gonna make a regular lowercase r, but you just curve the top. It doesn't get that little stem. So this is butter, pero. Um, certain accents use an alveolar tap in place of an alveolar approximate. You never know. The more you know, right? An alveolar trill, if a tap is one hit, a trill is multiple. So this is, if you can roll your R's, you maybe talked about this in Spanish class, or um, you did this when you were younger just because it's fun. That is an alveolar trill, and it looks like a lowercase r. Red. So when you're writing an IPA, if you're transcribing something, if you write this but you meant to write this, say you were saying uh, the shoes are red and you said the shoes are red, red. It's just silly. I thought you might appreciate that. And the last R we're going to learn about today is I hesitated whether to put this in, but I love phonetics so much, so I wanted to talk about it. It's called the retroflexed R. And so what it means is r, r, your tongue is aiming towards your alveolar ridge, but a retroflex means your tongue curves up towards your hard palate. So this R just sounds a little bit harder. So like red, red, my tongue is going red, red, and it looks sort of like this. So you do your upside down R, and then it gets a wing ding. Whoa. Retroflexed, red. That was an exaggeration, but you get the idea. Um, so your alveolar approximate, red. Your alveolar tap, or your tap dar, red. Your alveolar trill, or your trilled R, red, and your retroflexed approximate, red, red. It just sounds harder. Um, so if tonight felt overwhelming for you, if you are new to IPA and this is too much information, start here, red. If you're working towards broad transcription, so just a, kind of a basic overview, a, a broad way to describe what you're hearing when you transcribe words, start here. If you're feeling like you can handle more than just one new thing, maybe I would recommend learning this one second because you do say this in words like bitter, butter, hospital, that kind of D-ish sound that words a lot of times have a T in the middle, but we put like a D-ish sound, it's actually a top star. And if it's too overwhelming, forget about these. But if it's not, learn it, have fun. I wanted to share these with you tonight just because I love phonetics. Um, so congratulations, if you've been watching these in order, we've just learned about all the consonants. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for watching tonight and for joining me on another episode of IPA and IPAs. 
please let me know in the comments below what are you drinking what would you like me to drink do you have questions about approximants or about the consonant sound r a lot of people do r is tricky i will see you next week cheers everybody you can never fail with the fresh pale ale and molly if you're feeling overwhelmed by this and you're really only going for the unfussy show about the international phonetic outfit now